Let's continue on with domain 4.8, incident response with root cause analysis. So root cause analysis is a method used to identify the underlying reasons behind security incidences, ensuring they are addressed and mitigated. So when it comes to security, obviously RCA, root cause analysis, is us understanding what happened. Why did this incident occur and how could uh, we have prevented it, right? This happens really in anything technical, anytime there's an outage as well. But with incident response, it's very similar. So we want to have structured methodologies, right? Kind of like the five whys or a fishbone diagram to systematically identify and document root causes. Big word here I like to emphasize of all my students. Document. A lot of times, the best enterprise is not always the ones that are the smartest or they utilize the best technologies. It's the people that document and have a, a broad understanding of the environment and they have historical knowledge on it. So root cause analysis is not only for you to discover what happened, but also so that you have historics on what happened to that system that got compromised. Threat hunting. So threat hunting is a proactive approach to search for cyber threats that are lurking undetected in the network. Threat hunting is there to discover potential vulnerabilities, active exploits, and essentially look for advanced persistent threats. Threat hunters will sometimes even take on the role of like an advanced persistent threat to see, okay, how would APT team 31, or how would the Sandworm team uh, infect my network? And that's threat hunting, okay? It's a proactive approach. So you can conduct manual and automated searches through networks and data sense to identify IOCs, right? You want to look for indicators of compromise. You want to utilize threat intelligence and anomaly detection to guide hunting activities, as well as frameworks. You can use like the MITRE ATT&CK or Diamond Model the Analysis or Intrusion to kind of framework out how you do threat hunting as well. And this is continuous. Do you want to refine and adapt your hunting strategies based on the latest threat landscape and organizational changes? All right, digital forensics. So digital forensics involves the preservation, acquisition, and analysis of digital evidence to support incident response and legal proceedings. So there's going to be things like legal holds, what I talked about, the chain of custody, um, also going to be the artifacts, right? What are we actually preserving? How are we doing our digital forensics? What tools are we using? And we need to do this to keep the digital evidence to support that legal proceeding and also the incident response, okay? Later on, we'll actually dive deep into everything that's or everything that should be done during digital forensics. So we have reporting. So reporting in digital forensics involves documenting the findings of the forensic analysis and presenting them in a clear and understandable manner. Pretty easy to understand, right? There's going to be some templates you can use uh, during digital forensics to report. But at the end of the day, you just want something, right? You want a detailed report of the findings and methodologies used and evidence that support your conclusions of what happened. This helps support your root cause analysis. This helps you uh, communicate better to the stakeholders and also allows you to go to the business leaders and say, hey, we believe this happens because we have this detailed report, but we're going to summarize it for you, okay? Preservation. So preservation and digital forensics ensures that digital evidence remains intact and unchanged from the time of collection. So a couple things to think about here. For preservation, we want to duplicate things, duplicate the image. On Linux, we can do something like the DD command. We have the Forensics Toolkit imager on Windows that does the same thing. We want to make sure we have integrity of our evidence. So taking hashes of that image to make sure it's not changed. Or take a hash of it, uh, the initial discovery, and then take the hash. And then down the line of chain of custody, we can keep re-verifying that hash to make sure things haven't been changed, right? We want to make sure we have validated tools and techniques to create exact copies, like I've, uh, the DD, the Forensic Toolkit imager. And we want to take all, act all actions taken during preservation process to maintain a clear and defensible audit trail. So we're documenting it, right? Okay, look, we did a hex dump on our flash memory. We're doing a memory dump of anything left in RAM or our memory. We're doing X, Y, and Z to preserve this data and to also make sure that it's defensible, okay? E-discovery. So e-discovery involves identifying, collecting, and producing electronically stored information in response to a request for production and legal proceedings. So we can have advanced search and filtering techniques to effectively locate relevant ESI among large volumes of data. So this is just uh, saying in a court, 
We want to make sure we have good e-discovery of the evidence of that cybersecurity incident. We do this by having good preservation techniques, but also having the right tools and the right technical skills to perform e-discovery. Okay, let's go ahead and do our quiz. All right, question one. Why is maintaining a chain of custody important in digital forensics? That's going to be C, to ensure that digital evidence is preserved, documented, and handled properly to maintain its integrity and admissibility in legal proceedings. So that chain of custody kind of involves all those steps we talked about, right? It's like, hey, make sure you preserve this. Make sure you're doing your order of volatility correctly. Make sure that legally that this is admissible in court. And at every step of the way, every time this evidence is handed off, fill out this chain of custody form. Question two, what is the main goal of threat hunting in cybersecurity? That's going to be B, to proactively search for and identify potential threats that evade existing security solutions. So just our proactive approach, right? To discover IOCs, to discover APTs. Question three, what is the primary objective of preservation and e-discovery in digital forensics? That's going to be B, to secure and maintain digital evidence so that it can be used effectively in the discovery phase of legal proceedings. Question four, what is the primary purpose of conducting root cause analysis after a security incident? That's also going to be B, to identify and understand the fundamental issue that allowed the security incident to occur. So this is just root cause analysis saying, okay, we see that this ransomware was on this computer. Let's backward plans our steps. What happened? How did it happen? Who may have been involved in causing this? Do we have an insider threat? Did we not patch correctly? Was this a vulnerability that got exploited? Question five, why is accurate and timely reporting crucial in the incident response process. That's going to be to ensure that relevant stakeholders are informed about the incident's nature, scope, and impact for appropriate decision-making and communication. Okay, question six. What is the significance of a legal hold in the context of incident response? That's going to be C, to preserve all forms of relevant information when litigation is reasonably anticipated. 